Hello, Aaron Everhard from Vector Manufacturing, and uh, today we're looking at a, a solid sweep for a ball screw that someone on eMasterCamp's having problems with. And this is a fun one. Um, you can kind of see it's a real long ball screw. They're trying to revolve, or I'm sorry, not revolve, they're trying to sweep this profile right here. But as you see right off the hop, pretty soon you get this kind of pattern collapse. And if we zoom all the way down to the bottom, you see that gets really bad. You know, down here it's, um, you know, quite messed up. And the question is, why is that? Well, the answer is, let's take a look at the shape they're revolving and, not revolving, the shape they're sweeping and the direction it's going. So I'm going to look in the top view here and you'll notice we need to look at it from there. So I'm just going to duplicate this. I don't have a good view that shows it. So I'm just going to duplicate the top and edit that. And I'm going to rotate my Z 90 degrees. There we go. And I'm going to call this one, um, you know, start of screw. Doesn't really matter. We're not using it for too much here, but let's just go and set our view to that. And the first thing you're going to notice is this is drawn absolutely perfectly flat, the shape that they're revolving. But of course, the direction that it's going is not square. Like it's not normal to this helix that they're doing. Now, I don't have the original wireframe. I mean, obviously I could figure out the pitch. I could do a bunch of stuff, but what I need to do is I need to basically rotate the shape by the pitch of my screw. Now, if I had the original screw and the original specs, it would be, of course, a lot easier to do that because I, I know exactly how much to rotate it. I, of course, don't have that. I have this, this wireframe only, and it's really hard to extract points um, that will give me an accurate number of the exact pitch. So you can see that the error starts right off the bat, though. There's a bit of a bend right in this area. So we definitely have to solve that. So let's try doing a wireframe line perpendicular. Now this command, what this does is it creates a line that is perpendicular to an individual point. And so I'm going to choose the spline here and I'm going to go all the way up to the edge. All right, now I, got, I need to make sure that I'm snapping at the end point of this. I'm not snapping at the, uh, oops, I don't need to save that. Ah, that exited out. Thanks, auto save. <laughs> Let's go over here and Nope, so I'm going to turn off uh, that wireframe on level number one. I need to make sure that I'm actually choosing the end of this. And as you can see, it's it's kind of annoying to select this over the solid. So I'm going to create a new level over here. We're going to call this um, screw helix. And I'm just going to move this shape there so I could turn everything else off. Now, of course, the other thing I could do is um, I could have just selected it and hit Alt E or screen hide. Either way, it doesn't really matter how you do it. I just want to isolate it because I don't want it floating on top of there. So let's try this again. I'm going to do that and look at it from the top. Oops, not the top, the start of screw. There we go. And now we could draw this line. It doesn't really matter how long the line is. Uh, I'm just going to make it one inch just so that way it's nice and big. And you can do both sides, you can do selected side. It doesn't really matter. Okay. Now for viewing at home purposes, let's make this nice and bright and oops, I'm going to make this a bright red. Okay, cool. Now we can bring back the original sketch. Now I did this, uh, it must be in 2D mode, which is fine. For my purposes, I don't care. Let's look back at that start a screw plane and we can come up here and we can analyze an angle. Now you'll find this on the home page um, under angle. I right clicked and I hit add to the quick access toolbar. So I always have access up there. All right, so let's choose that and that. And you see, this is going to give us an angle. Now, I will warn you right off the bat, this is giving us a four decimal angle, 0.7.0647. I'm gonna control C, copy that. Um, that is not terribly accurate. If you're doing one or two revolutions, it really won't matter. But I can tell you that on a screw this long, you're going to be looking at significant error even by the end of the helix. And I'm gonna show you that here. So let's just take all of this right here. 
And the first thing I'm going to do, let's just do a dynamic transform. I'm going to transform right at the end of there. Let's take off 2D mode. And I'm going to tilt it by my amount. Um, so I just start typing a number to bring up that box, and I can paste in there 7.64. Okay, great. Now if we look at the start of screw, you're going to see that that's right in line with that. It is perpendicular to the normal or to the helix, um, to that position. So I'm going to hit OK. Now, of course, my extrude sweep in my solids tree went dirty, so let's regen that. It will take a second. Now, let's hit Alt-E to bring back our solid and see what we got. Well, it's a lot better, but it's still not perfect. We're still getting a little bit of compounding error, which by the end of it is still resulting in, you know, a divot. Is it better? Yes. Is it good enough? Absolutely not. So let's analyze the geometry and figure out what they're doing a little more so maybe we can come up with a better way to do this. So one of the problems that you're going to have is that, you know, again, we, the, the issue that we're running into here is that it's very, very hard after the fact to get an exact helix. It's, it's easy to get an approximate helix and an approximate pitch, but it is going to be very hard to replicate this exactly. If I had the original numbers, I could rotate it the exact amount. It'd probably work perfectly fine. But what's happening is with this little bit of overhang here, as this thing is being dragged along that helix to create the cut, it's slightly off pitch. It's slightly off perpendicular. And that's basically causing it to gouge into the part as we go around. Now, again, I don't have a great way of, of coming up with that pitch. I know I sound like a broken record, but that's really the core issue and one of the fun things of reverse engineering. So how could we do this better or easier? The easier way to do it would be to extrude a circle that gives us our position and then just put the fillets on because they're a natural result of this circle cutting a, a square intersection. So let's try that. So I'm going to come back to my top view and I'm going to, let's see here, let's take a look at this. I guess what I'm going to do is I'm going to undo this shape. I'm going to control Z. Yes, I know, control Z. So I'm looking at this, you know, this shape here. I can turn off my ball screw and I can turn off the helix for a minute. All right, so looking square at this shape, I can come up and I can make a circle starting at the center point of this circle. So I'm going to hit the C, or you could use auto cursor up there. And I'm just going to click on that. So now I got that. And, you know, I can come over here and just snap to here. Or the other thing you could do, you can, of course, right click and choose, I want the uh, diameter, in this case of an arc, and I want it to be that diameter. Okay, cool. So this is the shape that I'm going to... Uh, sweep along now. Of course, the problem still exists. Let's go back to my start of screw that this shape is not normal to the surface. So I do want the, or normal to the helix, I do want the best chance of success possible. So I'm just going to rotate this around the center here. Now, another thing to notice though, if we look at this from the top, you will notice that the center of this circle is part of the thing causing problems is that the center of this circle is not on the center line of this helix. I don't know the design intent of this part. I don't know if they were just playing around. If it should be, I would imagine that this circle should be lined up perfectly to um, at least the midpoint here. Obviously the center point won't be because that's determined by the radius, but I'm guessing this is what they meant. So I'm just going to move this over and we're not talking a large amount here. We're only talking, um, I know I've enlarged my cursor so you can see it easier, but it's like 0 0.007, you know, so very, very minor amount, but I'm going to move that over. And then what I'm going to do from here is I'm going to just rotate it that amount. And we're going to paste that in 7.0647. Okay, great. And green check. Now let's just edit our sweep. Um, I'm going to rechain this profile chains. It's going to take a minute because of course this is all a live update. So let's just rechain that. Great. Okay, I just hit enter on my other screen. Sorry, the dialogue came up. You can just follow along. Okay, great. Accept that and regenerate it. So now we're going to get a sweep. Um, there we go. That's all the way down. And this should be much more consistent. All the way down. Cool. 
Look at that. It ends right where we'd expect it to. Looks good while doing it. Okay, cool. So now back to this shape. Um, now what we just need to do is we just need to create a fillet that's whatever radius this is. So I'm going to come over here to my solids and I'm going to do a constant fillet. And I can choose these two. All right, great. End of that selection. Now it's going to bark at me because by default it's trying to do a 0.1 fillet. I don't know what that is, but I'm guessing it's around 50 thou or so just based on the, the size of this, you know, and I'm looking at the scale down here. So a quick pause while, oh, there we go. There's the error. Okay. Never mind. Didn't even have a chance to quickly pause it. Okay, so now it's asking me to modify these, so I'm just going to choose the radius of an arc, and I'm going to turn off my solid for a section. I want that radius, which happens to be 40 thou. Okay, I was off a little bit. Let's just turn the, the solid level back on. And there we go. Green check. Okay, <clears throat> and there we go. Now we have that consistent ball screw pitch all the way down to the end. Nice clean break at the end. Obviously, you probably want to extend that helix past on both sides, but I'll leave that as an exercise to the reader. So there you go. A little modeling fun on a Wednesday. Have a great day, everybody.